welcome to the interesting podcast episode number 129. This episode is with Gemma Weston, who is hilarious, tough as nails, and one of the most inspiring people I've ever had the pleasure to chat with. She is a stunt performer, a world champion flyboarder, and one of the funniest people on TikTok who has brought so much joy to me in the last few months while the world's been on fire, and I get to thank her for it, which is pretty neat. Uh, But we talked about everything. We talked about how she grew up doing different kinds of sports. We talk about all the extreme things that she's done. And I do not use the word extreme lightly. She's crazy, but like in the best way. Uh, We talk about her eventually getting into stunts, working on Legend of the Seeker, working on Vikings, on the Hobbit trilogy. Crazy stuff. And then eventually she started flyboarding. And before long, she was competing and became a world champion. Yeah, and all these things. I'm still talking about one person. Craziness. But shortly after that, she actually suffered a crazy injury while competing at flyboarding. And when I say injury, I mean like dislocated her knee, crushed the main artery in her leg, which she had to get emergency surgery for. She ended up getting like seven surgeries. It's nuts. And that was all before TikTok. So even after going through something as traumatic as that, she's still goes through and makes other people happy and keeps on working and does her thing. Gemma is one of the most inspiring people and also like a perfect example of the human spirit and perseverance. She's great. She's great. She's so nice. I cannot recommend checking her out enough. Uh, It's Gemma Weston on TikTok. She's hilarious. Hilarious. It was so cool to get to know her. And uh, yeah, you're going to love her. We actually talk about how she makes her TikTok videos and like the crazy process of what goes into those things. It's more than you think. But enough about that. Let's just jump right into it. Please enjoy the interesting podcast, episode number 129 with Gemma Weston. Theme song time. I love talking to people who are in New Zealand and Australia because you're on the other side of the planet and it just and makes me are in the technology. future. Basically. Yeah. Isn't that weird? It's so it's weird. It's a little weird. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever get used to time. It's like, I, what? It, and as a podcaster too, there's been so many times where like I would schedule and I was like, all right, cool. Let's do noon and let's go. Not realizing the time differences. Like, man, I'm yeah, so exactly. glad you knew the difference. <laughs> I have quite a few friends in Florida, so um, I was oh, like, really? oh, yeah. So you're aware of the, the day difference? Oh, that's yeah. Weird. that's I, I, I actually trained a lot in Florida for flyboarding. So. What? That, actually, that makes sense. That does not yeah. sound. That's, there is a, there's a lot of water here. so There is, and it's, it's warm. Yeah, that's, that is true. It is very warm here all the time. One, 100. Where in Florida are you? I'm in Naples. Which is oh, if you go that's like where I got injured, actually. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no way. That's wow, what a small world. It is. That's where a competition was held back in 2016. And that's yeah. Really? A, yeah, severe injury in Naples. So good hospitals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Wow. Yeah. Of all the really, I did not know that. I knew of the injury because you've shared it before. And I may right. or may not have followed you on TikTok, but uh, that's, <laughs> wow. I, you, you have surprised me, Gemma. Well done. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> of all, Naples too, not Miami. No, it was Naples, which was, was a little surprising because it is kind of, um, let's say, I mean, there's, there's. Old people. There's not, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to put it politely, but. That's, there's no that's way, Gemma. Crazy. There's no way. Yeah. <laughs> You nailed it on the head. Yeah, I, I, I grew up here. Um, I, I'm from North Carolina, moved down here when I was like six. And I remember people growing up saying Naples is home of the newlywed and the nearly dead. And <laughs> I can it's confirm that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, of all the places. But it probably is because of the old people that the hospitals are good because they're always exactly. there. 
Oh yeah, yeah. So. the vascular surgeons are amazing. Yeah, if you were gonna do it, you pick the right place, I think. Exactly. <laughs> of all the places to hold a competition though in Naples, that's crazy. Yeah. Especially with Miami right there. It's like an hour and a half away. I know, I think it just had to do with sponsors and, and who was willing to um That host. makes sense. Yeah. There's also a lot of money here. <laughs> yeah, true, true I'm all the math is checking out here. I'm yeah. into it. I'm into it. But you're so you're you're in New Zealand right now. I am. Not Australia. Not Australia. <laughs> Important to differentiate. Uh, yes. <laughs> are you you're from New Zealand? Yeah, I was born um in Wellington. Oh, right yeah. on. Yeah. That is one of the few places I know of in New Zealand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I feel like as uh, as ignorant as I am, you have Wellington, which mm -hmm. is where Weta is. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. No, that's then, correct. Oh, thank God. Whew, I'm doing all right so far. And then you yeah. have Lord of the Rings, which is a place <laughs> as opposed to a movie. It's Well, New Zealand is Middle Earth. That's, that's true. That's is so it crazy growing up. up in Middle Earth? Like, did you have to like fight hobbits or how does this work? Um, well, I actually, I did grow up in between New Zealand and Australia. So, but oh. I mean, I call, I do call New Zealand home. This is where I spent most of my years i had my high school years on the on the gold coast in australia though <laughs> wow um but yeah so i i watched lord of the rings on the gold coast rather than in new zealand um oh uh, okay yeah. okay what kind of stuff were you yeah. into growing up uh lots of sports that is unsurprising no <laughs> <laughs> sports was my jam yeah yeah still is what did you play uh, I played soccer. Um, oh, sweet. And I also went to Taekwondo and swimming. Oh, right on. And, yeah, just, just everything. athletics. Whatever just, works. Yeah, I kind of liked everything. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. And martial arts, that I find, I've talked to a lot of martial artists. Actually, a lot of stunt people that I've talked to started in martial arts. It's a yeah, pretty common it, I bridge. Think it's, it's, it's definitely a good foundation for sure. Um, yeah. Or gymnastics or dance. Yeah. Or kind of be quite good foundations for, for stunts. Yeah, I think so. Any sort of movement thing that you can do because you're moving through the air and then across the ground at a lot of speeds. Yeah. And learning sort of chore choreograph, um, you know, choreograph True. moves. Anyway. Yeah. Sure. That's pretty much what katas are. Just a lot of condition reflex yeah. responses and things like that. Exactly. Makes sense. Makes sense. I remember I had Luke Hawker on a while back, who's like the greatest dude. And he talked about he comes from dance. And then he got right. into stunts and stuff like that. And I was like, that's crazy. And he was surprised at how well dance translated to stuff like that. Oh, it's so good. Some of the best performers actually have a dance background. You know, dance is so, um, it's such a wide variety, you know, from break dancing to ballet. And it's all, it's just that body control. Sure. Know? Sure. It's all about movement economy. Mm -hmm. That's a phrase I just learned recently. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good phrase. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but I heard it, so I'm repeating it. Uh, but no, that, that's cool. That's cool. And your Taekwondo. Taekwondo is a good one. It's a good base mm -hmm. to have as well. It's Yeah, it's kind of, um, it, it can be a little stiff, but, yeah. you know, yeah. kicks, kicks, it's good for the kick type Lots, things, so. Lots of kicks. If there's yeah. one thing I know about Taekwondo, there's a lot of kicking. Oh, yeah. Which that sort of leg strength, I'm sure, came in handy later on. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I'm, definitely I'm seeing a thread here. Mm -hmm. so, then, so then at what point did you decide you wanted to get into entertainment? If you're so athletic-based, because a lot of people, I find, when they grow up doing athletics, they want to go into, like, professional sports. Um, I guess, well, over in the States, it's quite different because sp sports actually – you know, you can have a professional career in sports, particularly, oh. I mean, more so if you're a guy in, in, um, true in this, in the States, mm -hmm. did I say that? Yeah. I yep. said the state. Yeah. Yep. Um, but here in New Zealand, it's not so profitable. <laughs> I guess, sure. Unless, you know, um, unless, yeah, unless you're a guy and, and wanting to play rugby, that's about it. Ah, right. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. And you're like, you know what sounds easier? Stunts. Yeah, throwing my body around <laughs> for a living. <laughs> have, you, have you ever been lit on fire? I have, yeah. 
That's my favorite question to ask dumb people. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, I need to know, was this for fun or was this for a job? Because I didn't this realize was, it, it was actually, fun. it was for training. Um, I knew it. So yeah, it I knew was it. fun. <laughs> I, I knew it. What, how, yeah. was it. Was it nerve wracking? Um, I had a good team around me, so I wasn't too nervous. Um, except for the fact that I forgot to kind of lower myself down gently. Um, oh, no. and kind of just plonked myself down face first. So oh, no. I was still young. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. What, yeah, so what kinda, is the proper etiquette as far um, as like to go on fire? Well, you do. I mean, you do need the correct gear and the, the right Fair. people around you that have had a lot of training with fire. Um, sure. It's a lot of trust. The ones, yeah. It's a lot of trust. They're the ones putting you out. Oh um, yeah. <laughs> That's important. But you just, I mean, you got to judge it yourself. As soon as you start to feel heat because you wear layers like gel, cold layers, and then your burn layer on top of that. And oh. yeah. So if you feel heat, um, it will still seep through even after you're put out. So you just got to make sure oh. you know your limits, you know? Oh no. Yeah. Sheesh. How many times have you done that? Um, just a few times and not really on set. So it's, it's sure. just been, yeah, yeah it's just been training. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of have to, it is a literal trial by fire. It I've is. learned they're not yep. going to let someone on set light themselves on fire if they haven't done it before. Come on. No, exactly. You have to prove your worth beforehand. That's kind of awesome that you, <laughs> the, the fact that that's part of the training. Have you ever like thought about that? Like if you want to be a stunt performer, well, I understand I have to throw my body, which is, you know, physics uh, make that not the most, not the best landing sometimes in the training process. But then it's like you have to ramp it up with fire, which burns. Yep. It's insane what you do. I'm a big fan <laughs> of it. <laughs> It's, it's, it's varied work a lot of the time, so it's good. That's true. That's true. So was it something that you like, as far as stunt work goes, was it something that uh, you just randomly got into or something you worked up to and always wanted to do? Or I'm interested in how the bridge went. Um, I think it's, well, I struggled to sort of know what I wanted to do when I was in high school. I was sure. tossing around ideas of being a helicopter pilot, of, oh, sweet. of being a skydive instructor. Um, I just, it definitely was something slightly extreme that I was yeah. leaning towards. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, sure. Um, yeah, when I, I was, I was actually on the Gold Coast and there was a stunt course opening up uh, around the corner from where I live. So I, oh. Um, actually they contacted me and I don't know how, <laughs> I can't actually remember it being so long ago, but, um, sure. they did contact me and said, uh, that they have this stunt course running. It was a bit of a trial course initially. Um, but I went along, tried it and was kind of hooked. Um, yeah. Yeah. And just thought, well, this kind of encompasses everything that I would like to do and sure. have fun doing and I can continue to sort of upskill during my years, you know, so. Oh, good point. Cause you're adding is, stuff all the time. Yeah, exactly. There's never a limit to how much you can sort of learn True. so long as you enjoy learning it and you want to just kind of, or have that thirst to learn more. <laughs> sure. Sure. And for somebody that likes extreme stuff, that's, that's the way to go. Yeah, martial arts, and uh, it was just that, like I said, was kind of my base. And then, yeah, but I've always enjoyed snowboarding and other paragliding and all that sort of stuff. So it just, yeah, it, it worked out. Sure. That's yeah. nuts. What, so then what would you say is the most extreme hobby that you have? Because I feel like the list is pretty long. Um, at the moment with COVID and everything. <laughs> there, going to the grocery <laughs> store. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's not too extreme at the moment. It's probably there. just trying to create TikToks is, is was, yeah. a bit of a mission at times, but. <laughs> I imagine. <laughs> um, no, the most extreme I would say was probably 
I'd say it was, it's a toss between paragliding and flyboarding. Um, and I've been injured, you know, doing both. Sure. Oh no. <laughs> I, actually, I fractured my back paragliding. Um, yeah. Fr fractured it in three places. Thankfully stable fractures, Sheesh. but, um, you know, I had to stop doing anything for about two months whilst they kind of healed up. Um, and then wow. yeah, with the flyboarding, that's been the most, you know, the injury that I had in Naples. Yeah. <laughs> that was the um yeah, that was the most extreme for sure. That is a fair a fair winner. Mm. Par paragliding, is that how is that different from hang gliding? Is it the same thing? It's so hang gliding's the fixed wing. Um right. with the frame in the that big, like, triangle. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, triangle shape mm. and paragliding is more like a uh, skydive wing but a lot bigger and oh you sit in a harness so it's a sit harness it's not a, a dangle harness sort of thing um Ooh. and yeah you kind of catch you just catch thermals and you float um you're trying to stay up as long as possible and just you know you can do all these um sort of crazy crazy tricks sure wow mm. so you have no fear of heights no fear of heights, no. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I don't know if, uh, yeah, it was the accident that kind of, um, my paragliding accident made me a little hesitant, but I got over it pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that made it made you take a break like everyone else, and then you're like, please listen, I got this. It was just my back. Come on. Yeah, it was just my back. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was stable, stable fracture. Yeah, that can, that's fine. As long as it yeah. heals. Did you, exactly. Do you think having gone through the training with the martial arts beforehand and things like that, that you were like, you kind of have that spirit instilled in you that it's like, oh, well, you know, if I can keep going, I'm going to keep going. Like, there's not a second thought of being like out, out from it. Well, no, I think it was, it's just something that's, that I've always had as a kid. Like I used to fall over as a kid all the time and scrape up my knees and just get up and kind of. Sure. brush the dirt off and keep keep going like i didn't want to slow slow down <laughs> yeah i love yeah. that that's so cool that's so cool i i feel like that's how you that's a good thing to have just in life is like the yeah. ability to create momentum and then just keep on going yeah and you got to be resilient in a way you in this in this day and age it's it's necessary to have some sort of resilience i think <laughs> yeah i totally agree so then do you remember after taking that class what your first gig was? Yeah, I do. The uh, My first sort of paid job, it was actually kind of a work experience and paid job at the same time. Um, nice. Because they wouldn't allow anyone on unless, you know, under the payroll. Fair. Um, so I actually worked on the Water Horse. Um, oh, yeah. I remember that you know movie. That yeah, so it's about the the Loch Ness monster. Yeah, it's like the <laughs> little one in the bathtub. Yeah, that's the one. Um, and then I kind of so I was just I got hired as the stunt assistant. Um, Sweet. so just running around grabbing mats and getting coffees for the guys or whatever. Nice. Um, but then they needed a double for the mum on on some of the boat sequences. So. Ah. Yeah, I had my hair cut and dyed and all that sort of stuff, and and wow, joined the the double team. <laughs> Man, you they really threw you in the deep in there, pun intended. Yeah, like, it was good though. I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it, and the people were awesome that I worked with. So sure, what wasn't that Weta that did Water Horse? Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure they they did do some stuff on it. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, because I, I, I remember that because I think that was on Nickelodeon or something like that. It was a pretty big deal when it happened because it looked so real. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember. Job. Yeah. And that's pretty cool. And yeah, it's kind yeah, of interesting to see what films were, you know, so the fact that like that was in New Zealand or Australia? It was filmed in Queenstown. So wow. Big massive lake because it was because of the lake basically made it. Um, yeah. Sure. It was easier to to shoot uh to make it look like scotland you know similar scenery right right a lake's a lake on the screen apparently yeah <laughs> that's cool though and you got right into the doubles usually i feel like people have to work their way up to something like that right place right time 
Yeah. I mean, it wasn't in any sort of hard doubling work or anything. Sure. Sure. Um, so it was just, but it was a, it was a, a foot in the door. In yeah. I mean, that's what you got to do, especially in the entertainment industry. It's all about working your way up. Oh yeah. A lot of networking as well. Um, you yeah. know, if you're personable as well, it helps. So. Agreed. And for, and for stunts specifically, there's so much, I feel like there's so much trust even more so than like a normal film crew of like, you've got your crew there, but like stunts is you're literally putting your body on the line. So there's this extra level yeah. that you need. Yeah. You definitely need faith in your, your team. Um, you know, yeah. for the coordinators, they want to get the, the performers that they know will do a good job. Um, Everyone sure. wants to look good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, they're, they 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 want to get the people that will help make them look good too. So. Right, right. So then do you remember what your first stunt job was that was like really physical like oh, like what you would imagine a traditional stunt job to be? It was actually working, I would say working on Legend of the Seeker. Um, Ooh, that yeah. that's a huge deal. Did that's you oh, you know that? Yeah, did that's a big, that's a big yeah. show. Yeah, it only did, it was a shame it only had two seasons, but yeah, um, yeah no, I I really enjoyed working on that one because uh, I was still fresh uh, sure. as a stunt performer, but, you know, I there were a lot of fight scenes, a lot of uncomfortable costumes, but that you had to just, you know, you had to suck it up and yep. perform as best you could in with what you had. Um, but yeah, fight scenes, a lot of, uh, I did a few horse falls. Uh, so oh. the, yeah, there was a lot of sort of new things that I tried um, on Legend of the Seeker. So. so horse falls. Are you super padded up to do that? In the costume that I was in? No, I had no pads. <laughs> oh no. The, yeah. how, what, how, what's the key to this? How do you survive? <laughs> I was, I was definitely... I bounced back a lot more back then, um, <laughs> I, you know, didn't sure. have my five board injury or anything like that. And, right. but, and I was, just, I still am pretty tough, but I was really tough back then from, I'd gone from snowboarding up the mountain to then flying up to Auckland to do a horse fall. Cool. It actually, um, and I didn't, <laughs> I don't know if any of the coordinators will listen to this, but I actually <laughs> had a fall, um, uh, up the mountain where I, I didn't know you could sprain your rib cage. What? Um, yeah. So I kind of had, it was, it was strange. I fell snowboarding on a rail, um, hit, hit the rail, oh, no. got home that night, uh, noticed that one of my, that there was a lump poking out from my ribs. Oh, no. And, um, and I went to the physio and, and she said, yeah, you sprained your rib cage and tried to like, twist it back in ah. anyways it was two days later that i traveled up and did five or six horse falls and the next day i could barely get up but <laughs> uh, i didn't yeah i didn't want to tell anyone because yeah. you know, when you're fresh and you yep. just you suck it up <laughs> yeah my god you're made of different stuff Gemma. that's crazy <laughs> yeah you got to be tough in this industry. Yeah, and that was on your own time. <laughs> yeah. even, you could. Oh yeah, that's the thing. Here. I've I've only ever gotten injured or really badly hurt in my own time during <laughs> during my uh, you know hobbies. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. That's this is a testament to how important a team is. Exactly. Look at this. This we've figured out the poster. We got this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I love looking at like uh, uh, pr specifically stunt performers because there's so many like random things that they've done before that you wouldn't expect like, oh, like talking to people, oh, I did stunts on Seinfeld. We're like, what? Hold on. Excuse me. But you, <laughs> you worked on Yogi Bear? I did. That's not something that I would think in the top of my head as far as stunts go. Oh, it's, it actually had, it had a lot of stunts, surprisingly. Um, yeah, and a lot of whitewater stuff too. That makes sense. Um, I don't know if you remember the. So I they actually got a whitewater specialist in. So I didn't. Oh. I would have loved to have done it, but um, 
yeah, they got a different level in for the uh, these this rapid scene, and it was a really dangerous rapid uh, up in the North Islands, which they have to open these uh, dam gates in order to let the water out and oh. to bring to rise the water up to a level. I mean, it happens daily, anyways, to let out the uh, the lake level. Sure, but yeah, they um they had scheduled sort of times to to let the water out when we were filming Yogi Bear there, and the water through that sequence or through that area just comes rushing through, and it's it's like a grade six or seven oh. rapid, yeah. <laughs> oh. So it's it's dangerous. And you're like sweet. Yeah. You're like writhing your hands. You're like, perfect. Can I injure myself on this? Ha <laughs> ha, let's go. I wish I could have done that one. It looks so much fun. <laughs> have you been, uh, was it whitewater rafting? I have, yeah. So there's, um, there's tons of it in New Zealand. And there's actually, there is a grade seven uh, waterfall. The only gray, commercially rafted grade seven um, in the world, I think I'm not sure, but it's yeah, literally this this waterfall. So the the raft oh. goes through this tiny little canyon down this massive waterfall, and the boat pretty much like the raft pretty much goes right underneath, and you pop back out, and you just oh. got to hold on. <laughs> oh. And you've done that? Yeah. Oh man, I shouldn't be surprised, but it's, wow, it's good. <laughs> is is the bottom of the boat? Is it like firm? Like, how do you um, not get, like, smashed from rocks and stuff from underneath the boat while you're on it? Well, it's, inf it's inflated, so, you know. Okay, it's so it's really pretty tough, sturdy. Tough, yeah, it's tough material. Okay, that makes sense. I've never done it, so I'm going to ask a lot of really dumb questions. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always wonder that, because I've been in, like, dinghies before. You know, it's, mm -hmm. like the, it's like a wooden floor almost, and then it's got the two inflatable sides, and I've been on those before. But I always think yeah. about like the pool inflatables and like I remember using those to like go fishing in a lake one time, which was not the best idea I've ever had. But yeah, I tried to translate that to rapids <laughs> and I was like, that doesn't sound like it'd be a good idea to use a pool inflatable in that Definitely situation. Definitely not a pool inflatable. No, you'd, you'd need one that uh, it's like covered in duct tape. designed oh. for. <laughs> yeah. Got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe i'll try it i don't know i feel like you tried it enough for both of us but i'll, I'll give it a shot maybe no you have to try it at, at least once in your life i reckon is is there something that you haven't tried yet that you want to um i mean there's there's tons of things yeah <laughs> but the name just one would be would be tough but um fair, fair. i mean i just uh, yeah anything that i sort of see and want to try i'll generally make it happen if i can yeah. <laughs> um, if i don't have the funds to make it happen i'll find the funds somehow you know? there you go there you go there's yeah. that persistence again coming out yeah <laughs> and then from there speaking of lord of the rings i know you worked on the hobbit i did yeah how cool is that it was a pretty good um pretty good production to work on and i actually got to work with my little brother as well who got into stunts what that's yeah. awesome he followed in my footsteps and and now he's doing better than me <laughs> <laughs> i mean to be fair how often does he injure himself in his free time uh not not that's too what I mean. often it's not a yeah. one-to-one -one. it's not a one-to-one -one. <laughs> he goes through the injuries as well and then we'll see where we are yeah you gotta you gotta stat these pages side by side on the same Maybe way. I'm just more clumsy than him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say you're more extreme just because, okay. <laughs> you know, but that's cool. I mean, I can't even imagine because Lord of the Rings, I mean, it's one of the biggest things ever in the history of ever. And The mm -hmm. Hobbit is like that scale. It's crazy. It's like, did you get to wear any, did you get to use any cool swords and stuff? Like, what'd you do on there? Oh yeah. I got to use, um, well, I played a few different characters, played a goblin, um, oh. an elf, a lake town. I doubled a lake town. So uh, what? I don't know if you remember the, the main lake town guy. Yeah. Bard, Bard, I think his name Bard, was. Bard, yep. Yeah. And his, so I doubled his daughter actually. What? 
There yeah. you go. And they, um, the sequence where the orcs bust through the ha- into the house. Yeah. Um, and the girls kind of hide under the table and all of that sort of stuff. And yeah. Dude. That doubled, doubled the girl on there. Um, but yeah, the, I got to use elf uh, bow and arrows and what? big elf swords and all that sort of thing. Um, it's a good fun. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Pretty cool job. Yeah. I mean, whatever, if you're into that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Is there, for working on a movie like of that size, is mm-hmm. there a ton of like prep and rehearsal and stuff that you have to do for those sequences? Or is it a lot of like, we'll figure it out? Uh, sometimes it, it's, it, it depends. Like if you're bra- background sort of stunts, then, you know, you kind of team up with another stunt performer and mm-hmm. go through, um, you know, a five or six beat fight and just trying to fill the background with, with a, a fight that you can quickly learn and ease like is easy to remember. Sure. Um, sure. And if you're, you know, fighting one of the main characters, then that takes a little more prep. Sure. Yeah. There's a lot more coverage and stuff like that, as opposed to trying to fill the space with action. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. So how long did that take? How long, like how long did you work on the, the Hobbit trilogy? Um, started September, 2011. And I think it, it filmed, I think we even did sort of pickups in 2013 even. Nice, nice. Yeah, so it, there was, yeah, sort of 2011, 2012. And I think it was pickups in 2013. So, you know, it kind of spread out over the course of a year or so. That's one of the coolest things about the Lord of the Rings trilogy and the Hobbit trilogy is like, they just filmed them all. You're like, here you go. And then the chunk. Oh, and you're yeah. like, how did you even, how does your brain work to make these into separate I don't know. That's awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Just really really creative people. And yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And a lot of planning, I imagine. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm terrible at stuff like that. So (laughs) then at what point, so you're a stunt performer at this time, you've been doing it for a little bit. When did you start flyboarding then? Um, I actually, cause I went over to Ireland to work on Vikings. Oh, Um, what? Yeah. That's not near any of the places you are. No, <laughs> how what? I had some, I had some contacts over in Ireland, and when it was kind of dead over in New Zealand, I sure. thought, why not? I love to travel, so yeah. Um, I up and up and moved, and uh, yeah. So I, in I think it was when was it? Two thousand fourteen was when I first worked on Vikings. Love um, that show. Oh, and I Ireland. spent. Oh yeah, Ireland's great. I spent Amazing. five months in Ireland and what? I only had probably, I think it was 12 days of work on Viking. So I just, I was just getting to know them. Nice. So I didn't get as many days as I sort of hoped I would get. Sure. But I came back over to Ireland in, um, no, I went back over to Ireland in 2015. Nice. But I kind of, told myself that I wasn't going to wait around for work. Nice. And um, I had, at the end of 2014, actually, my brother, he started up the flyboard um, uh-huh. or a flyboard business here in Queenstown. Gotcha. So, um, he kind of got me on as an instructor or taught me to the point where I, yeah, I was able to instruct Um, but I got hooked and then I just wanted to keep going with it. And I was looking at the, um, I was looking at girls that were doing it and I contacted, um, some chicks in Florida actually. Hey. Yeah. And, um, and asked them if they would be willing to sort of train me up to their level. Um, so yeah, when I had a, well, you know, there was a bit of a break on Vikings in Ireland. Yep. I just jumped on a flight to Florida and it was sort of a, it's good because it's a lot quicker <laughs> to get <laughs> from Florida to, um, you know, from Ireland to, to Florida than it is from New Zealand to Florida. That's true. So, yeah. And that's, that's where I met actually my, my best friend um, and well now best friend and she, helped train me 
to to yeah do right all on. the sort of tricks <laughs> yeah was it difficult to pick up um so i already learnt a little bit with through my brother mm -hmm. so i kind of i just i took to it really well um cool. I think having a background in stunts really helps because you're not afraid to fall. Um, Good point. Yeah. I've always been comfortable in water, which really helps. You can't really be afraid of water and fly. Makes board. sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, not having a fear of heights really makes a difference. Right. Um, but yeah, it just, I quickly learned a lot through, through my friend Kristen and then, yeah. And then, um, we just, I got up to her level and then it's just, it motivated her to try new things. And then whenever she learned something new, I wanted to learn it as well. And then I'd learn something new and then she wanted to learn it. So we we're kind of just boosting each other constantly. Yeah. Those are the best kind of friends to have. Oh yeah. We loved it. We just were training constantly whenever I could. And then if I got a call for work, I'd pop back over to Ireland. So I was on the move a lot in that's 2015. The, that's the dream, isn't it? Man, bouncing yeah. back. Is it, so how physical is it? Or first, how does it work? <laughs> um, it actually, I, I mean. But I don't you, get it. Well, you ha actually need a jet ski for it to work. Cause oh. yeah. So the hose hooks to the back of the, the jet ski. So you have to take off the steering nozzle. Um, and you wow. hook the hose to the back of the, the ski, which is attached by 180 degree U pipe so that it's diverting the water pressure through that pipe and through the hose, the hose links onto the nose so that you're not pulling the ski around backwards. But it basically, the ski turns into a pump. So oh. what normally propels the ski forward, all that water pressure is instead being diverted through that hose and out through the nozzles in your board. So it's propelling you upwards. And wherever you go, the jet ski follows. Oh, okay. Yeah. I did not realize that was a jet ski. I was like, it's like a tiny boat thing. Because, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really cool. It's like reverse engineered yeah. a jet ski to make a new sport. Who it was actually a, a jet ski world champion who created the flyboard. Really? Um, yeah. So he, wow. he's always wanted to, like ever fly? since he was a kid, he wanted to fly. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen it, but the guy, you know, he, so the guy that invented the flyboard is the guy that's flying around on that jet board. If you've ever seen it. Oh, okay. So, that's cool, yeah. man. I, cause I, I've seen the jet packs, those things, yeah. but yeah. I, I, I had not seen a flyboard actually until I found you and I was like, oh, right. what is this? Okay. And then I went down the rabbit hole and I was like, oh my God, is it more balance or strength when it comes to it's propelling yourself it's balanced so it's definitely it's you don't have to muscle through it um mm -hmm. it's it's all about technique where you place you know what position you hold your feet in like the slight movement of of putting pressure on your toes could make you fall forwards you know it just oh. so you've got a sort of there's micro movements constantly happening in your feet to keep you balanced um but the pressure it's funny when there's less pressure and you're lower to the water, that's when it's harder to balance. Um, oh. and when you've got tons of pressure, um, going through the hose and you're up 20 feet in the air, it's actually really easy to balance. But, um, yeah, it's, it's all about technique more than, than strength. Interesting. Cause I, I've seen tons of your videos now. And they, you make it look so smooth. And I'm like, there's no way it's as easy as, the, as she's making it look right now. <laughs> it is. Lot. I mean, we all have a lot of um, flyboarders will actually have different styles. If you sort of, oh. yeah, if you check out some of the guys, they'll kind of look different to me um, in terms of just flying style, I guess is the way to put it. Um, Gotcha. That's kind of cool. It's like dance when you got people that are different types of dancing, except you're in the kind air and of, you're propelled yeah. by a jet ski. Like, I just wanted to make things look slightly, well, I didn't want to, it just kind of happened trying to make things look a little smooth and effortless in a way. 
even though it's not effortless, it's still yeah. <laughs> effort. Um, sure. But yeah, just, just to kind of add a feminine element to it because it was predominantly a sport that guys were dominating. Sure, sure. I mean, it worked. I thought it was yeah. smooth and it kind of like, I don't know if this is what you were going for, but it kind of had a sort of mermaid-esque sort of movement for some of your stuff. And I, I, I dug it. It was really cool looking. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely um, not, not planned. It's just kind of how I, how I flow, I guess. Yeah, it's just how you move. Back yeah. to the movement. So exactly. then at, at what point from the time that you learned what it was, did you decide you wanted to start competing in it? Was it pretty shortly after? Pretty shortly after, yeah. I yeah. just got, I got hooked. And um, yeah, I just, I looked into competitions and what the people were doing in these competitions. And I just, I put it a just clicked. goal in my head and wanted to compete. Sure. And I mean, yeah. you, did you, you competed? I mean, I did. <laughs> world champions, a pretty cool title to hold. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what? It was, it was, uh, that was an amazing competition, actually. The Dubai one. Yeah. yeah. The we all, um, yeah, no, it was, we all had to, well, I mean, I think they accepted 40 guys and then there was only 10 spots for women. Cause like I said, it was a sport dominated by men. Sure. Um, so the women, you all had to put in a, a video application, I guess, a two minute video a application and, um, I was super worried about not being selected, but mm -hmm. ended up ended up getting selected and impressing the um, the inventor of the flyboard, and he became nice. my sponsor uh, after that competition. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Yeah. No big deal. It's whatever. That's freaking <laughs> cool. Like, yeah. not only did you show up in a predominantly male-dominated sport you got the dude who invented the thing people are doing to sponsor you that's pretty cool Gemma. yeah i mean there were you know there were divisions um, of course you, know, you had the pro divisions you had the veteran divisions and and the women's division sure um, still so, but yeah so it was a it, 10 10 women selected out of all the videos and then and then yeah and then one world champion not bad <laughs> at all I think the the idea is well, maybe because I grew up on Dragon Ball Z, the term world champion is just like of the world. It just sounds really cool and like <laughs> pretty neat, pretty neat. And you're at this time, are you also still doing stunts and stuff? Like when would you have time? Uh, yeah. So actually to do the competition, I did miss out on quite a bit of work in Ireland on a show called Penny Dreadful. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So I kind of it was a toss up between you know this once in a lifetime sort of experience in my mind or Fair. some work um right and yeah to me it's it's not all about money or making money um mm -hmm. especially when you you know i just found something that i really really was super passionate about um, right and the experience just outweighed uh the work i think me. you chose right yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the way to go. Can't take the money with you. The experience no, exactly. is what it's all about. Exactly. That's so cool that you worked on Vikings, though. I'm a, oh, yeah. It's, I'm a big it's, fan it's of the show. show. Yeah. I bet. Which, which episodes did you work on? Um, well, I worked throughout season three and season four. Ooh, um, those are good but ones. Did you, you know Queen Quentrith? Yes. Uh, and, and the, the crazy lady? <laughs> Crazy queen, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> she's actually a really, really awesome actress. She's super. Oh, she's nice. incredible. Yeah, she plays um, it very well. She does. She's a brilliant actress. Um, but the tower sequence—I don't know if you remember that, where um, the guy yells up and is yelling, "Kill the yes. queen!" Yes. And the two two guards that are guarding Queen Quentrith uh, try to kill her and her child. Yeah. And she handled um, business. Yeah, she did. Yep. So I got my ass kicked in that scene. That was you? <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> Me That's and my so friends. Cool. We, yeah, we were the guards for that scene. Dude. Yeah. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. Even all these years later, I remember it. That's that yeah. show that show's so awesome. 
it is. It's so it was it was so much fun to work on. And those actually, I had the the head of the makeup department on my show a year ago. Good. Dude. Oh really? Yep. Yep. He's a great dude. But we were talking about that and like how they do like blood and stuff. I was like, is it just is it just a hose? He goes, yeah, pretty much. We got a tank. And we just. I was like, I imagine those battle sequences when they're like invading Paris. You're like, yeah. It was sticky as well. It's always sticky blood. Yeah, I bet. I bet. What a cool thing to do, though. Yeah. So you competed for a bit, I imagine. Because you don't, like, become world champion in, like, three weeks. (laughs) It was a few months, but, yeah. (laughs) That's that's insane. Insane. And then your injury happened, which a lot of people, I feel like, do not come back as strong as you did. But now hearing your story and how resilient you are, I'm less surprised that you did. Yeah, I mean, it's it's still, I have, it's not, I wouldn't say it's 100% my leg. Um, right. You know, I, it, I folded in half, basically. I collided <sighs> with the hose, and the hose oh. hit just below my knee. Um, whilst the nozzle, so the hose was pushing against my leg, whilst Ooh. the board was wanting to go one way, you know keep going forwards so it kind of it created this uh, these opposing forces and i basically Ah. kicked myself in the the quad with Ah. my left leg with my left foot (laughs) so um yeah it was a complete knee dislocation and i crushed them the main artery or the popliteal artery in my leg so um so i had to have an emergency vascular bypass I obliterated my PCL. I fractured my ankle. Um, oh. And yeah, so I've had seven surgeries. Wow. And I don't want any more. I do, I do uh, not fair. want to. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's good enough to do, to, to do stunts uh, to an extent. So, sure. Um, but it's, it's been a, it's been a journey. Yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's, I, I got to say, I, I could not respect you more for like, I mean, at least on this end, like how well you seem to have been able to bounce back and like maintain a sense of humor. And like, I, I've seen the pictures of the injury. Good God. That's not yeah. supposed to happen to a leg. No. And, um, whew. I, I mean, it was, it, there was a three hour window apparently that I had before they would have like a, they wouldn't have been able to save the leg. So really, I'm lucky. I am lucky to have a leg. If it had happened anywhere else, like a month prior, we'd been in the Bahamas. Um, so if I'd injured myself the same way in the Bahamas, I just I wouldn't have had the same care that I got in Naples. You know, sure. Like I said, vascular surgeons there are yeah. really good. <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of Naples, you're welcome. That's bonkers <laughs> to me. I, I don't I don't think I'm gonna get over the fact that Naples nobody even knows where this is, Gemma. This is a very big deal. That not only do you know where Naples is, but that <laughs> this happened and you still have a leg. That's all cool things. Yeah. Oh yeah. Not bad. How so how long was your recovery then? Um, I couldn't walk for four months. Oof. And yeah, I had I had to have an external fixator. So I had to fly back to New Zealand um, and have my surgeries, a lot of my surgeries. So I had the initial emergency surgeries in Naples. Mm-hmm. Um, but the leg, because I obliterated the PCL, the leg just wouldn't, um, the lower leg wouldn't stay connected. So oh, they that, that. To, <laughs> 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 yeah, so they had to, um, they had to use an external fixator drill that into my Ooh. femur and, and tibia. <laughs> ah. Yeah. So I had that for fun. like yeah, I had that for uh, over a month approximately. Um wow. and yeah. Kind of wheelchair bound and crutch crutches bound for a few months. Sure. What what was the hardest part of this? Was it like the mental battle that you have to play in recovery or like not being able to jump off of things and let yourself on fire or What's happening here? Yeah, it's still, I mean, the frustration definitely was there um, There. because I am an active sort of person and to be held back by that type of injury 
sure. got to me mentally. Um, I bet. But I didn't lose the determination to kind of recover from it. And I still, you know, it is a daily thing of, of just keeping that determination there. Yeah. <laughs> and trying to overcome, because it's almost like a, um, it's, it's been rehab ever since. And that's been, it's been four years, you know? Right. I mean, it's, it's your leg. <laughs> yeah. It's not like something you're not using all the time. Exactly. That's amazing though. It's a great testament to the human spirit and just like, you know, keep going. Like, yeah, oh, I, remember, yeah. I had my wisdom teeth out and three days of not being able to eat solid food. And I was ready to destroy everything that I found. I was like, I'm just so hungry. <laughs> so yeah. I, can, I can't even imagine long-term recovery of like someone who's so mobile all the time and on the move to be like, well, your bottom half of your leg doesn't want to be a part of the rest of you. You're like, mother of God, can I just like glue it? Yeah. I actually asked them in the hospital. I'm like, is bi bionic legs a thing yet? Or can I just get one of those? <laughs> That's right. Where are we at? Can I upgrade this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a fair question, I think. Give it uh, yeah, time. Give, so. Yeah, give it time. Why not? Would you, yeah. would, you, would you have a bionic leg? I'd love a bionic leg now. Right? <laughs> like this it, one's still, still not better. working properly, so. Right. You're like, just switch them out. Would you, yeah. get, like, would you get like a cool one? Would you want it to look like a human leg? Or would you want it to be like, that is clearly a robot leg? I'd want it, I, I think I'd want it to look like a human leg. I'd want it to look like my leg now, even with the scars. Ooh, I don't ooh, care. Be cool. it would, yeah, there is, they tell a story, you know? Yeah, and then you can do the whole like, hey, touch it. And then when they touch your knee, you're like, can't feel it. Can't yeah. feel it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. and great, great party tricks, like let people pay you to kick it. And then you're like, all right, I mean, it's your shin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I shouldn't have any sort of, upgrades uh so <laughs> from there i know so i found you on tiktok that was when i right. first became aware and i will tell you that you know the world's been on fire for a few months so i've been uh looking for ways to find joy and connie has brought me so much joy i cannot tell you so that's awesome. <laughs> thank you for that it's You're welcome I just say, so my, my wife is a nurse and she like, when she comes home, I'm like, here's things I found on the internet. And it's been four days of just showing her Connie videos. I'm like, hey, look, <laughs> look at this. Look at this new one. Look at how good this is. <laughs> it's so how, what brought you to TikTok? What, how did this happen? Because I don't know if you know this, but you're a pretty active person who does some really cool stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, I mean, lockdown happened so i Fair. think it, what brought me to tiktok i guess was covid yeah, and um, makes sense because i do i love to travel even like since my injury i've i feel like i'm traveling every month or so really um so i barely ever find myself in, in one spot for too long um sure. but it was my brother's girlfriend who i just i would post funny videos for friends and family sure um and never really make it too public and like i've been using that filter for as long as i can remember <laughs> really <laughs> it's but, a good one um, yeah it is a good one um but yeah and then my brother's girlfriend she was like you need to jump on tiktok and i'm like oh i don't, i mean i'm so bad at social <laughs> media i can't even keep up with instagram same, um, same. I think I posted eight video, uh, no, eight photos in one year on Instagram. And it was, <laughs> you know, there was that whole thing like post your top nine. And I only had like eight photos. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that doesn't even make a full square. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but then I guess I jumped on TikTok and it wasn't, I wasn't too, too addicted at first, but then, it yeah, starts. Like, yeah, lockdown kind of when I started getting less uh, or it started getting colder here, I was like, all right, well, scroll through TikTok. And then <laughs> next thing I knew, an hour or so had passed. And yeah, yeah. And yeah. then I see if a funny video I liked or a funny audio I liked. And I just went, all right, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll lip sync to that, see how it goes. 
Um, and then one time, yeah, I just tried that filter that I've always used for, mm -hmm. for, to make my friends and family laugh. Um, and I posted it and it did really well. And then people wanted more. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, all right. And then I don't know how I kind of came up with the name Connie, yeah. <laughs> but it kind of fits because Connie is short for Constance and I don't know, oh. Connie is constantly crazy. So I love it. I love it. It fits. You look at her, you're like, yeah, that's, that's Connie for sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm so glad there's more. Because when it first happened, I was like, oh, this is fantastic. And then it happened again. I was like, oh, yes, this is great. How are you so good at lip syncing? It's it, a skill. It, it does take practice. It's, it's a little harder than people think, I think. But yeah, for sure. Like, sometimes I have to Sometimes I don't write words down, but sometimes I do have to write words down because my brain's just not working properly. So I'm like, all right, I've got to write this down. Yeah. And kind of re read through it as I'm listening to it and then go, all right, now it's time to film. <laughs> there you go. It's, it's so good. So when I see someone yeah. like you who's re not only really good at lip syncing, but also emoting, like it's a legit skill to do yeah. it so well. And I'm <laughs> super impressed. And it's really, well, it's really <laughs> On on average, you don't have to answer this, but on average, how many takes do you do? <laughs> well, like I said, like I do if generally if I can't get it in about ten takes, I'm like, all right, it's just not happening today. I've got to that's fair. I've got to move, move away from that one, or otherwise I'll get too fresh. And I am a bit of a perfectionist, so it could take it can take me a few tries. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense. It's just, yeah. I I understand watching it. There's a mountain of work here. That is not being oh, recognized. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I like I it is a lot easier to just to do my own face, lip sync that, to the audios. Um sure. But you know, using a Snapchat filter, then trying to and then uploading to TikTok using that audio, it it takes it does take a at probably twice, if not three times as long as just a normal um you know just using my own face yeah but every time i do a video with just me i get i do get bombarded with comments that are like where's connie we need connie <laughs> so i'm like all right i gotta give the people what they want <laughs> that's right that's right she's sleeping all right it's me now you, you yeah. got me <laughs> <laughs> i know if i do a live video on um tiktok and i've only done a few but if i do a live people are like where's connie i'm like ah i'm sure you can understand that <laughs> it's not quite possible. <laughs> and if you don't understand, then hmm, I don't know yeah. what to tell you. Exactly. Exactly. She'll, <laughs> she'll be back later. All right. She needs sleep yeah. too. Yeah. She's, she's napping. That's right. That's right. Do, <laughs> do you, how many of the videos that you've made so far are like spur of the moment versus like you have to plan them? Um, what's kind of crazy is the ones that I have haven't thought would do really well have gone viral and they are usually the ones that are just spur of the moment i'll see it and go oh i want to try that so i'll Always. do it upload it and then bam it's kind of gone viral right and yeah it's just kind of <laughs> i just i can't figure it out i can't figure out the <laughs> algorithm or anything like that but um yeah it's just it's a post it and see what happens type thing yeah, I feel like that's the best way to go. Because anyone, yeah. anyone who tries, you can kind of smell it in the water. And then you're like, mm, I don't want you to want me to like it. I want to like it because I like it. It's like a weird game of chicken that you play. It is. With it is post. weird like that. I mean, yeah, no one likes a try hard in a way. But, yeah. in a, but, but at the same time, it takes a yeah. lot of hard. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. It's like you have to try hard for quality, yeah. but then you can't. It's just audiences are ruthless. <laughs> oh, they are. They are. <laughs> Man, but you're doing all right. Congrats on a, a very big number recently. Yeah, yeah. it was uh, It was definitely the, the Olaf Frozen oh my God. video that, that did it for me. That's the one that I've probably shared the most. It's just, <laughs> again, thought. Thought went into this. A lot, like you've got your costume. You've got the different angles and the shot and the flawless lip syncing. It's, it's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and, but that's the thing though. I just kind of, I don't, I can't 
to be honest, yeah, I can't remember what made me think of doing that. Maybe someone <laughs> said something about Frozen or Olaf. Um, but yeah, I just went, oh, yeah, I have a white uh, duvet. I can find some sticks outside. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, walking around on my knees, I've got to say that's, that's with my knee injury. It wasn't yeah. easy. But, <laughs> but you commit. That's what you I, I committed remember. to it. And <laughs> yeah. It did frustrate me a little bit trying to, it was frustrating because, you know, you can only film up to 60 seconds on, on Snapchat. Right. So I, I'd have to push, I'd have to push record and then some, you know, in a hurry, get cover myself in this blanket and, yeah. and then try and get the sticks in, in position. And then, yeah. And then say the names of the people and, so I I must have looked crazy if anyone had walked in on me doing that. I I would have just been going back and forth going, Anna, yeah. back up, Anna, back up, Anna. <laughs> and doing that and trying to get as many in in that 60 seconds as possible, you know? Oh my God, that's so funny. See, the, these are the things people don't know. This is what goes yeah. into your thing. <laughs> there is effort that goes into it for sure. <laughs> There's a lot of effort. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. I did not realize that. Like even I knew there was a lot of work, but I didn't realize how much. And I applaud your level of commitment. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> there's, there's. So, I've, I've watched them more times than I am comfortable admitting. And I, that's okay. You can admit it to me. I, I, I'd be. It's a lot. I'll, I will say half of your, <laughs> half of your views probably from naples florida specifically my house it's That's so right. good. watch it's, as many times as you like boost it for me oh done <laughs> done consider it done you did another one that i've seen probably the one i've seen the most is the one it's the audio of the the parent leaving the kid behind and saying have a good day and then it just keeps cranking up oh yeah it's yeah. <laughs> that flawless flawless the lip syncing is great the, and just because I do, I'm an actor as well. So I, I see this performance thing and I'm like, you know how difficult that is to do believably the way you're like, just hats off, hats off. Thank you. Yeah, no, I like that one, that audio. I love it, that it's audio. great. It's and all the yeah. ellipses. You know what's oh, yeah. funny? I don't know that audio from the source. I know it from you. So when I right. hear the original, I'm like, this is Connie's audio. What are, what's that? Who's this guy? <laughs> 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 no, he's brilliant. I love Pug. He's, he's great. Just, yeah. It kind um, of reminds me of when artists say, like, when the cover becomes more popular than the original. Like when Johnny oh, Cash right. took over, <laughs> I won't back down. You're like, it was Tom Petty. Not anymore. It's Johnny Cash. It it was Tag. Now it is Connie. It's just, I don't, <laughs> I don't make the rules. I don't make the rules. Well, he's he's definitely way more popular than me. Like, there's no, For now. no coming close to him. <laughs> but, I mean... A lot of people have been enjoying Connie doing the Ellipse audios and, and I'm, I'm absolutely fine with it. I love good. it. <laughs> good. Get used to it. It's so good. Yeah. I, I, I love something that you said as well in that if you got a bionic leg, you'd have the scars on it because yeah. I am all about the story. Like I've put myself in so many stupid positions just because afterwards I'm like, if I survive this, this is going to be a great story. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. And I, I, I recognize that as well and i think that's really i think it's a really important and cool viewpoint to have just in life in general that even mm -hmm. the hard times can equate later on you know what i mean oh definitely yeah it's kind of you know people keep diaries I yeah just keep there you go hey it counts <laughs> scars are way cooler than diaries because then you're like hey yeah. how'd you get that one on your eyebrow you're like well depending yeah. on how much i like you is if i tell the truth or not you know? Oh yeah, I've, I've I've told I've told a few stories. Yep, um, about my leg. But yeah. <laughs> what what's your what's your favorite not true story about your leg that you've used? Um, I did. I kind of feel mean about doing that. <laughs> um, but I like I caught a little kid staring at my leg and uh, and perfect perfect and, target. Um, and I sort of smiled and and they asked what happened and I said oh. Well, when I was in Florida, I wrestled a gator. Um, yes. But you should see the gator because yeah. <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. That's a that's a good one. That's yeah. a good one. I was gonna suggest bear. Gator's way better. Yeah. Way yeah, better. I've also said shark, but um, yeah, that's Ooh. 
that, not as that, that one's too real. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you gotta have just enough to raise the eyebrows to be like, is she? Yeah. You think so? You think you can yeah. to do that? And then they go I tell mean, people. Flyboarding though, you know, folding my leg in half the wrong way. That's kind of that's it's that's good way enough worse. Story. I would rather get my leg taken by a gator than have me punt my leg into the abyss. Yeah. I just, I, I'm, I'm going to take the lesser of two evils here. Right. But ha so then having lived through so much, uh, is there any like wisdom that you've gathered along the way that you like, if I want to pass something off from these scars, the thing I've learned, is there anything that pops out of your head? Uh, not off the top of my head. Yeah, never. <laughs> I mean, never. like, obviously flying, I don't know if, if this is what you're sort of asking, but obviously flying, I, I am quite... I don't even know what I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I am cautious, obviously. Um, sure. Flying since my injury, because, um, you know, Fair. I am not at the same competitive level, and sure. I... Sure don't want to have to go through another injury which takes me away from from my career understandable um, but yeah i guess my uh, the reason it happened was because i was overthinking what i thought the judges wanted to see i thought i did think they wanted to see um quicker transitions between uh you know each flip sure and but now having being a judge, because I, I got into judging after my injury. Um, oh, nice. But after having been a judge, I realized it's not really about... I mean, it, the transitions help between the two flips, but mm -hmm. um, it's how good you make something look is oh. really what's, what's more important in a way. Um, sure. And it was kind of my signature my signature trick. It's it, I called it the koru, which... Ooh. Um, is a Maori word for new be new beginnings, basically. Um, oh, and it's so cool. kind of a, like, if you look up, if you Google koru, which mm -hmm. is K-O-R-U, you'll see um, that it's in a new, I'm not doing this justice right now, just Google it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you'll see the meanings behind it. But it was kind of, I named it after that because of the way the flip looked. And then I flip out. So I, I would sort of, side barrel roll flip one way and then i come out of that flip and go into a back flip the other way oh, so it's kind geez. of moving from one direction to the other and yeah the the accident happened just because i didn't i tried to do it too quick and i didn't allow enough time between the two flips basically oh okay it got okay. me too yeah too close to the hose Whew. and it was because yeah. you were in your head about it yeah so th what i have learned is to just i guess not overthink things too much you know yeah i think that's a great thing to pass on as well because mm. like when you think when you're in your head about it then you're then you're try hard <laughs> it's like exactly almost nothing good comes from overthinking just go exactly. for it yeah which sounds like a like the title of your book would be just go for it and then there's like you break your back just go for it you just, go for, the, just go for it. Get back on the horse. Get back on the horse and then learn to fall off of it and then do it yeah. again after exactly. you've sprained your rib. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Done. I see yeah. it. I see it. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I think that is a great place to stick the landing. Dude, we've been talking for over an hour already. We have. You look at been that. Right. We did it, Gemma. Yeah. This was so fun. I am so glad to talk to you. This was just great. It's, it, yeah, it's, it's been a effortless conversation thank you you did very well for someone who hasn't done one before yeah I'm, I, like i yeah i did email you and i sort of said well i'm not not so used to the this whole interview thing but yeah <laughs> we'll i give get it a that shot. a lot i get that yeah. a lot so <laughs> before i let you go then uh where can people find you online where can people find connie where you at on the internet um, so on Instagram and TikTok, my username is at Gemma.Weston. Um, and yeah, if, if people want to Google Gemma Weston flyboard, there'll be a ton of videos that will pop up of, of me flyboarding. Yeah. It's really cool. I dig yeah. it. I dig it a lot. <laughs>
えー Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. That's balance with two L's. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps. Let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I made a Patreon. So if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows about a bunch of random things, you can now do that at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, Victor, JC, and Christina. Your support means so much to me, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.